water. Water is divided into two categories, hard water and soft water. Both have distinct differences. You should be familiar with both terms already. For your leaving certificate, you only need to know hard water. We will begin with soft water first. It is simply defined as water that does form a lather easily with soap. Soft water does not cause lime scale easily. Hard water is divided into two subcategories, temporary and permanent water. We will look at permanent water first. It is defined as hard water that cannot be softened by boiling. In other words, boiling does not remove hardness. Magnesium sulphate and calcium sulphate cause permanent water hardness. Temporary water hardness is hardness in water that can be removed by boiling. Magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate cause temporary water hardness. Removing water hardness can be achieved by three methods. Distillation, a procedure you should be familiar with. However, this is both time consuming and very expensive. Washing soda crystals could be added to water to soften the water by forming an insoluble calcium carbonate. And finally, ion exchange resins can be used to remove water hardness. We will talk more about this in the next slide. Washing soda removes the calcium or magnesium ions to form precipitate. Bath salts are generally washing soda crystals that have been coloured and perfume added. An ion exchange resin at home will soften water by removing cations that cause water hardness. Ion exchange resins at home are also called cation exchange resins. A cation is a positive ion. Calcium magnesium ions that are found in water are replaced with sodium ions. This helps to soften the water. Ion exchange resins will need to be replaced over time. Sometimes all ions need to be removed for experimental or medical reasons. We call this producing deionized water. Ion exchange resins that have both cations and anions. This is essentially a mixed bed resin. It will need to be replaced over time. You should know at least two pros and two cons for water hardness. A common misconception in chemistry for students is that distilled water and deionized water are the same. This is not the case. Deionized water is water that has no ions present however still contains dissolved solids and dissolved gases. Whereas distilled water contains no dissolved or suspended solids or no dissolved gases, it is therefore purer than deionized water. There are seven steps that you need to know in some detail for the purification of water for drinking. Oxygen is vital for us to survive, and fish are no different. They inhale dissolved oxygen through their gills. Oxygen isn't very soluble in water, however, and becomes less soluble in higher temperatures, which is why global warming is a serious problem for fish and plants underwater. Organic matter, such as slurry or factory waste, enters the water causing excess nutrients to build. This, in turn, causes more microorganisms to multiply rapidly. 
These then respire using up oxygen levels very quickly. Fish then don't have enough oxygen and unfortunately die. Pollution is any harmful addition to the environment. The biochemical oxygen to demand is a test for oxygen and it essentially tells us how polluted the water is. Lower values mean less pollution. This is the definition that you need to know word perfect. You need to be able to describe the test for a biochemical oxygen to demand. Eutrophication is the enrichment of water with nutrients, leading to excessive growth of algae and other plants. Eutrophication is caused by plant nutrients, nitrates and phosphates entering the water by means of slurry and fertilizers. Plants and algae absorb these nutrients. Algae in particular grows rapidly, causing an algae bloom. The algae bloom doesn't live long and dies which causes microorganisms to grow and multiply due to them feeding onto decaying bloom. The microorganisms respire and use up all the oxygen for the fish. Heavy metal ions, such as lead, mercury and cadmium, are only required in small amounts to be toxic. They get into our rivers by factories, old lead piping systems and illegal dumping. Heavy metal ions can be removed by precipitation. AAS is used to detect the presence of heavy metal ions. It is important that you do not confuse sewerage treatment with water treatment two completely separate areas. Primary treatment removes large and soluble objects by screening, the use of a wire mesh. Smaller suspended substances are then removed by sedimentation. 33% of the BOD is removed at this stage. The secondary stage is a biological process that removes sewerage by bacteria. Sewerage is pumped into aeration tanks filled with microorganisms. This is called to activate a sludge process. Microorganisms feed on the sewerage using oxygen to help break it down, and air is continually pumped into the tanks for there to be enough oxygen. Sewerage now flows into a settlement tank where the sludge is removed. The sludge can be reused either as a fertilizer or a fuel. By the end of the stage, 95% of the BOD has been removed. Often sewerage is piped into the sea. The huge body of water easily dilutes the sewerage and there is less chance of serious pollution. The microorganisms present are often destroyed by the salt water by means of osmosis. The tertiary stage is the final stage. The sewerage contains phosphates and nitrate ions, which I mentioned before can cause an eutrophication. 
Aluminium sulfate removes phosphates by a method called precipitation, very similar to heavy metal precipitation. Phosphate reacts with aluminium to form aluminium phosphate, which is insoluble and can settle out of solution. Precipitation is expensive, and nitrates can be removed by a far cheaper option, the use of denitrifying bacteria, which convert nitrates into nitrogen gas. There are a number of methods of water analysis that you need to know.